Hello, this is Hawker the Bean, and I am here with more tumbling. We're just doing this again because I felt like it. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Let's get into it. I don't want to waste any time talking. Because I want to waste some time talking. I spat my tongue hurting like a frick. Can a jerk. <laughs> I told my GF and I was having an episode earlier and she replied Is it the beach episode? And it shocked me so much. That grounded me immediately. Got asked by a nurse at a psych ward, Are you like legit sad? As I was sobbing on a chair, made me stop crying because I was so perplexed. I want you all to know that this is like a legit strategy that tells people. I say something so oh, freaking stupid or absurd that it distracts a person's brain so much that it drags them back. I could grab some like people are actually taught to do this. You need to be taught to say stupid stuff. Dang, I've been doing that for free in my entire life. So I learned a philosophy riddle from 1688 was recently solved. If a man born blind can feel no difference between shapes as spheres and cubes, could he, if given the ability to distinguish those objects by sight alone? In 2003, five people had their sight restored through surgery, and no, they could not. I love when the apparently deep questions turn out to have clear empirical answers. <laughs> I know I need to drink the water. Why did I put it so far away? That's a better place. Cash a gay little spell that curses your entire bloodline. Dude, what the frick? You cursed my dog! My dude, why are you related to your dog by blood? We made a plot pack to be best friends for life. Oh, frick. That's cute. You cast a gay little spell that uncurses this dude's dog. Honestly, that was cute. Yes. Just have to learn how to read. That's all I have to do. And on approaches a great philosopher and asks him, Great philosopher, are large breasts or small breasts better? The great philosopher sat in silence for a moment and then commanded Anon to reach for his wallet. How much do you have in bills? The great philosopher asked Anon. Anon told him he had $30 in bills. Suppose he was to have $30 in coins as well. Which would have greater mass? And I was told the great, the great philosopher that was would be the coins by a long way, but which the great philosopher said would have the greater value. Anon was enlightened. This makes no sense. It literally could not be more straightforward. It literally does make sense. Both have the same value. They're both thirty dollars. I think the 
failure of many people to grasp an incredibly simple bare bones metaphor is it's demonstrating implicit bias very well. The two traps that ate the fucking answer and still can't understand it because he's expecting the answer to be his own views. No, I'm not expecting anything. It's just a badly framed metaphor. Bro, you said the answer. Both have the same value despite different sizes. It's simple, basic, elementary. But I never says that. It just asks, asks, asks you which one is greater, and the text ends there. Which is thinking that one indeed has a greater value than the other. And the one with greater value is the answer. It asks you which one has a greater value, and what is the answer to that? I'm not about to ask you over a fucking intent and size metaphor. Never underestimate, of re the, never underestimate the lack of recomprehension on this site. <laughs> this meme. <laughs> Why the fuck do we have a green comprehension test in school? Who the frick is there who can read words but not understand what they're saying? Why did it worry that any of us would read a story about a woman, a, a story where a woman wants to kill a puppy and not be able to tell who, who is the villain of the story? You either can read or you can't. Sure, there's somebody out there who can understand that life's from words but can't make sense of the intent message of written text. Me now on Tumblr. By the way, the frickin' point if you're anything like I, 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 this, like that guy from that website, idiot. The point of this is that they have the same value. They, there is nothing that is empirically better. It is up to your own personal preference. Whether you rather be carrying $30 worth of coins or $30 worth of bills. That is the same. What, as you rather or large boobs or small boobs? That is up to you, not anyone else. There is no right or wrong answer. And if you don't freaking understand that, you are a fool. Anyway. Why did you give the last of your food to that poor disguised mimic? You're finding a peace letting go, but now this odd thing won't leave you alone and it's even turning itself into various items in an attempt to aid you. <sighs> the mimic is the young one, and you knew that from the moment that you laid eyes on it. It was disguised as a crate, but the angles weren't quite weren't quite right. The corners were a little lopsided, and you look and if you looked hard enough, you could make out the creature's mouth. A sigh escapes you as you toss over the last of your rations, not even bothering to stand up as you do so. What's the point? You think? I've been trapped in this cave for days. Nobody is looking for me, and the monsters are closing in. Why should I bother even trying? I could just fall asleep now and let this little mimic eat me too. The thing is, it doesn't. It eats the rations. When you lay down and try to sleep, it doesn't attack. You do hear it move closer, but you don't open your eyes until you feel something that's your hand. You can see that the mimic has morphed itself into a crude sword. You can't help but chuckle. You're cute, but I don't have anything left to give you. You don't have anything left to give for yourself either, but you don't say so. The mimic doesn't seem to take no for an answer. It becomes a dagger, then an axe, then a staff, as I was trying to determine what your preferred weapon is. Listen, I don't know what you're trying to do, but it's not working. I'm not going to pick you up and take you into some other part of this stupid cave system. Nice try, though.
You turn away from it and attempt to sleep again. As you do so, you find yourself shivering. You really wish, as you doze off, that you had a blanket. When you wake much later, you're surprised to find yourself covered with the warmest blanket you've ever had. You quickly sit up, eagerly hoping that someone had come for you, but the cave is empty. When you look at the blanket, you notice the imperfect edges and the janket you seam across the middle. Why haven't you eaten me yet? You asked the little mimic that's now laying on top of you. What's wrong with you? That mimic, still in the form of the blanket, slithers off of you, but it does not respond. Instead, it begins taking the form of weapons again. When it turns into a crooked staff, you reach out to spite yourself. Your fingers wrap around it and use it to haul your aching, injured body to your feet. I guess there are probably nicer places to die. You know you won't get far, and you don't. Especially not with that light. The book doesn't seem too bothered though. When you collapse again, it scuttles off. Perhaps this was simply where it wanted to take it. it wanted you to take it. Perhaps now you can finally succumb to your exhaustion. Then, a few minutes later, a misshapen clay cup bumps against your hand. It's full of water, and there's a crack in the middle like a jagged mouth. You pick up the cup and you drink, telling yourself it's only out of desperation. When you set the cup down, that little cracked mouth seems to smile. This goes on for what feels like days. The mimic helps you limp along the tunnels, transforming into whatever you may need at any given time. Every time you fall asleep, you expect not to wake up, yet you do, usually with a mimic a blanket wrapped around you. It brings you food and water when it can. A big surprise comes when um, one morning you find your police have survived another night. You're happy to have the... Maybe really keeping you warm. It's a new feeling and a confusing one, but it's not unpleasant. The other monsters that you know are down here or seems to leave you alone for the most part. You aren't sure why. It crosses your mind that maybe it has something to do with the mimic. Then again, maybe they're just waiting for you to die. That is gradually beginning to sound less and less appealing. The day you catch a glimpse of sunlight down a long and narrow tunnel, it's the first day you finally feel like your old self again. Your pace quickens and you don't need to lean on the mimic staff that form quite so much. The illusion shatters when you reach a light source. A small gap high above. You curl up on the floor and cry. When you finally have the strength to look up again, your mimic has become a ladder. Getting up is hard and you're safe. Climbing even more so. But the latter is the biggest and best transformation the mimic has done so far. And if it wants you to get out, then you can't let it down. You feel it push up under you when you reach the gap. Uh, you have to squeeze through and then freedom. Fresh air and sunlight. You 
You wake up at sunset with a blanket draped over you. A blanket with a jagged seam down the middle. That was sweet. The amount of time that the ancient Egyptian civilization lasted is just so mind-boggling. It lasted over 3,000 years. That's just an insane amount of time. And ended around 30 BC, meaning that it will only be extinct for as long as it existed in around 950 years. Cleopatra lived closer to the invention of Bitcoin than the building of the pyramids of Giza. They were already ancient to her. What the fuck? I was about to say freak, but I decided I'm, I'm definitely about to five minute mark. You can swear now. We have records from the time of Ramses II of ancient Egypt doing archaeology on monuments that were already a thousand years old to them. Ancient Egyptian archaeologists. Ancient Egyptian archaeologists. Excuse me, I have to go lay down and think about things. Friends pranked me by converting my bedroom into a utility closet while I was out of town. Not the light fixture. Made use of the saw to cut a hole in the wall. What the heck? The view from inside my room. What the fuck kind of combination of time, resources, energy, and dedication do your friends have to build an entire mini room in your room as a prank? I want people who are disinvested in me. How people got out of the room after doing that? <laughs> what the heck? If I was an animal, and I knew I was being observed in research, I would do something super fucked up, but only once, never again, ruin their lives, keep them guessing. <gasps> Maybe that's why monkeys eat babies. Oh yeah, when like, a certain species of monkey tribes like fight each other, apparently one, apparently the winner of the tribe will eat the babies of the other tribe, it's really messed up. But maybe that's just only what being observed by scientists. <laughs> it's so fucking funny that nuclear waste is such a contentious topic. Like, yeah, those damn nuclear advocates you need to figure out somewhere reasonable for that nuclear waste. For now, we'll be sticking with coal power because it puts its waste products safe and sound in our lungs. Where they cannot hurt anybody. The air pollution fandom says some incredible shit. Sorry, I realize I'm not done because, by the way, yes. 
Carbon emissions are less harmful than nuclear air waste, even in our lungs. What? Well, I get that nuclear waste can give you cancer sometimes, but it's better to have a thing that doesn't give you fucking lung cancer than a thing that gives you everything can. Okay, I see. You the point. But no. Nuclear is like actually renewable. I think I've seen this one before. Some girl in my class was talking about McDonald's Shamrock Shakes. And this yeah, dude and cowboy they both said they suck. And then he looked me in the eyes and said, What you're gonna do is go to Arby's. Get yourself a mint chocolate shake. A mint chocolate chip shake. And I said with such authority and certainty that I did so as soon as I got in my car. I see your concern, y'all. But this was a man telling me what to do. This is a man who had important knowledge and shared it with me. He was aiding me on a quest I didn't even know I was on. You fool. That was RV himself. Yeah, this is really familiar. What a good fanfic. I can't wait for the next chapter. Updated. July 30th, 2009. The best part is this post is just going to get more upsetting as time goes on. Find out that some people would, would write books in order to fit them into marketable query letters. Each of you figure out how to sell a book and then write it. Write and write a book and try your best to sell it. And honestly, that's the funniest thing to spend your time on. on on Earth on. I want to do it. Oh my goodness. What's the most marketable basic big it's trendy book top a plot? What does it need? What are the ingredients? So I'm hearing uh, YA fantasy where a uh, teen girl boss is a so and is in the dystopian world and has to choose between two boys. One of whom is nice, blonde or brown hair, and one of whom is mean, singularly a thousand year old vampire, but also her total soulmate, and definitely not a pedophile. I mean, conservative. Same thing. But both are white, and also they're solving a murder, and also she's awakened to her magic powers because her dead mom was secretly a monarch. And though we were not criticizing her hierarchy anywhere in this book because the real problem is actual inequality. It's that the girl boss, who will make a, a good ruling decisions, isn't on the throne. And then again, and when she isn't saved, and has long lost princess or whatever the frick, she makes a kingdom and democracy, but they elect her anyways because everyone is well raped. I buy I hear true it's foul and from then it titled The Throne of Shadow and Teeth. You've done it! You've broken down increasingly if you restrict a, a young adult publishing market to its barest essentials. Yeah, I see it. Freaking hell, Twilight, Hunger Game, what else is there? I think we're also getting base. Anyway, let's read this meme. Oh my goodness. Okay. Skeletons have xylophones, demons have fiddles, ghosts have thermines, and vampires have five organs. But what? What of the humble werewolf? What instrument does she get for her very own? Werewolves are vocalists. What instrument could rival her beautiful howl? Here's a drawing of it. Oh my goodness, it's so beautiful. Look at that. They're in a band together.
<laughs> that's that's amazing. Okay, that's a good note to end end the video on. Let's do that. Oh dang, I really freaked up my model. Oh wow. Oh no, it's not tracking hardly at all. What the heck? Hang on. Okay, it's working now. More or less. <laughs> How is r slash Tumblr? If you enjoyed that video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Tomorrow I might do some more of this, I don't know. Until then, goodbye!